How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. 4-0 to start the season. We have the kryptonite for the Houston Astros and Juan Soto. The guy is absolutely out of this world. He is an alien. I think the Martian, I think we've got to maybe change that name over to Soto. Blank check this man at this point. I mean, this is no DJ LeMahieu scenario. This is blank check for Juan Soto scenario. Different caliber of player, 25 years old. If Aaron Judge is struggling, it doesn't freaking matter. Soto rises to the occasion, and I'll tell you what, I'm ecstatic about it. He was excellent in all facets of the game. A couple, that single yesterday to take the lead, that was outside of the zone. You know, he, he slapped that thing the other way, and that energy has been something Something that we have missed dearly on this Yankee team. A lack of energy the last couple seasons. Heads hanging low. Soto goes up there and he's staring down the receiver. He's nodding his head. He's doing his shuffle. And by God, pitchers are afraid to attack him. It doesn't matter if you throw it outside of the zone or in the zone. Soto's going to take advantage of it. Uh, we're excited about it. That's why we have him included in our, our bet parlay today. To get another hit against the Diamondbacks. Um, and Ryan Nelson, we are ecstatic about him. Kind of, um, you know, this this early start to the season, he has been just something. That we dreamed of this, Ryan. Several months ago, we literally dreamed of this scenario unfolding exactly. It's so fun to watch it happen. And today we got Luis Heal on the mound, the fifth starter for the Yankees. Heal was excellent in spring training. In fact, I think Stroman said he hadn't seen anything that good um, this spring for the Yankees. He was excellent. Everyone is ecstatic. There's scouts that have been like, this guy was unbelievable. His stuff looks back to normal. His velocity looks great. We're excited to break down why Heal could have a really good game today against the D-backs. But Ryan, before we dive into it, Early impression on Juan Soto. I know you were <laughs> freaking out yesterday. This whole weekend, honestly, it's a special, a special time to be a Yankee fan watching a player of this magnitude. We got to keep this guy long term. Yeah, first and foremost, when it comes to Juan Soto, I mean, he impacted all four games, right? Like he impacted all four games. All four of the games. He 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 left his mark. You would argue without Juan Soto, the Yankees would not have won any of the games in this series and you know we talk about like the importance of having guys around Aaron Judge and Aaron Judge let's just be real here he did not have a good series right like that's everyone's kind of aware of that but it's the fact that the Yankees were able to win without Aaron Judge having a great series that really encourages me that's not something they were able to do in years past that's not something they certainly would have been able to do last year because they heavily relied on Aaron Judge and all of his offensive production. The team went to sleep. The team no longer was that good the second that they were uh, asked to, to produce without Aaron Judge. He is the glue of that offense where he had been for so long. And now you have a guy in Juan Soto who can anchor the lineup and give you everything you need, uh, you know, offensively. He was, I mean, he was just box office. He was money. When the line shined, when the light shined bright, bright in Houston, he shined even brighter. And, and that's just an unbelievable, like, I'm not used to the Yankees rising to the occasion. I'm used to the Yankees, um, you know, kind of crumbling and just kind of like falling apart at the seams and not performing well and, and struggling to do whatever it takes really to win. Like, I, I'm not saying the Yankees even tried to win in years past, but it just feel, felt like they were never equipped enough to do so talent-wise. So uh, I, I'm very excited uh, to kind of see how the Yankees um, – Season continues to unfold with Juan Soto. Uh, and then another underrated storyline um, about the series was the outfield defense. And it's funny enough because Soto actually, it, it, Soto was a big part of the defense, even though we, we've always kind of viewed him as somebody who'd have the mask in the outfield. He's played a lot better defensively out there, but look at like some of the catches Verdugo was able to make. He hauled in a catch at the end of that game with a 40% catch probability. You think of that catch he had against Tucker earlier in the series in that first game that prevented an RBI double. This guy, I mean, look, Verdugo, I, I have kind of always been been eh on him like I, I mean he was a Red Sox I hated him when he was with the Red Sox I never liked him as a Red Sox I've never been like a big fan of him I've always been like skeptical of the antics because the antics have been frequent I mean the guy the, the mirror if you talk to any Red Sox fan and ask them the, the Alex Verdugo experience they probably don't have many good things to say the energy is definitely great from him and he's made a bunch of big catches and they don't make those catches last year because they don't have good defensive. They didn't have good defensive left fielders. This is a crazy stat, Alex. Isaiah Kinefalefa, Jake Bowers, and Oswaldo Cabrera were all converted infielders. To, all infields converted to outfielders. They accumulated for over fifty percent of the innings played in left field by the Yankees last year. Most outfield innings you saw from the Yankees last year were for not for from not outfielders, not people who play the outfield. That's crazy. That's unbelievable. The bar was so low, and I know that the bar being low means that we should not always we shouldn't praise routine plays, but we're not talking about routine plays. A game-saving throw from Juan Soto, that's not a routine play. A great catch to end the game in game 4 of that series, 
That's not a routine play. That catch against Tucker, that's a great jump. That's not a routine play. He was consistently making really tough plays look easy. I'm not going to lie. For the first time in a while, a ball was hit to left field. And I'm like, he's coming with down with that. He's, com he's, he's coming up with that play. When that ball was hit by Kyle Tucker, my first thought wasn't, oh, no. Oh, my God, that ball's going to drop. It's... Doogie's catching this. He's he's catching that ball. Like that ball's getting caught, and that's a special feeling. That really is. So, um, yeah, no, like I, I really, it truly is a special feeling. And and of course, Soto just he just he he exuberates this energy and confidence that I I I've so desperately missed with this team. So yeah, very excited to see him. And of course, very excited to see Luis Hill pitch tonight because we obviously saw the spring training he had. He was excellent. And um, yeah, like Alex. Overall, we'll have to wait and see with with Hill and kind of how this team pans out. But the vibes are high, and if Hill turns in a good start, the vibe to go even higher. Look, the Astros are just as good, if not, you know, better in some respects than the Diamondbacks. But, you know, Ryan Nelson, not the best pitcher in the world. Actually, he's pretty bad. <laughs> We're going to be completely honest with you. Um, against lefties, we love the lefties in this lineup to take advantage of him. He almost gave up a 300 average last year. He had a pretty relatively decent spring. But again, spring training, grain of salt. You never really know how it's going to translate to the regular season. So we're optimistic there. Heel, same thing. Um, has to prove it in, uh, in terms of regular season performance. But his stuff is just gross. You know what I mean? I mean, he's touching 97 on his fastball. His velocity's back. He only pitched four innings last year in low A Tampa. Uh, coming back from Tommy John surgery, pitched 21.2 innings in double, in Triple A back in 2022, um, and four innings in the MLB before that that big injury that forced him out for a year. But he's back, and, and look, the Yankees are really excited about this player. Aaron Boone specifically has been um, speaking him up pretty nicely, and you know, he. I'll read to you the the quote from him specifically. Said, "I think to uh, I think it put him back on the radar in the short term. Okay, he's further along and more ready than certain, more than certainly, maybe even than I thought. So that definitely got our attention, as well as how he's looked leading up to that. Excited about what he was." health-wise, but didn't necessarily expect him to be this far along just from a polished standpoint. He's done a great job with his secondary stuff. His fastball continues to be terrific, and he seems really focused and in a good place. I uh, feel like he's a guy that's earned it. And then he went on to say, um, I feel like the way Luis has thrown the ball really from the jump, he's certainly earned that fifth spot with how he's performed. Continue to be really excited about what he can bring as a starting pitcher. And with Garrett Cole out right now, we needed that kind of high-profile upside guy to you know kind of be that fifth option. Luis Hill has as much upside as anyone in this rotation to me. Um, I think on a good day, you know, he's striking out seven or eight batters and he's going five, six innings. You know what I mean? Like, I think he could be that kind of pitcher for us. Um, his strikeout numbers are phenomenal. Fastball's great, has good life on it. His secondary pitches are really solid. He's been active this uh, offseason for sure and during spring. But, Ryan, what pitches do you think that really stand out to you? How is he going to attack the Diamondbacks? What is his sequence like? You know, some interesting things probably to digest and kind of divulge in regarding why he has the upside to be a, a top flight pitcher. I think he could work his way into the middle of this rotation if he keeps performing well, um, especially during the regular season. Yeah, I mean, the Yankees are kind of a stuff plus factory, right? Like the Yankees have produced some really high stuff pitchers very early on, first time through the rotation. So, you know, not going to start telling you guys, all oh, the rotation's back. They're going to, don't even worry about it. Garrett Cole, he's gone. Who cares about Garrett Cole? That would be stupid, right? Like I'm, I'm going to level with everybody here. The Yankees are going to need to figure out how to keep themselves in games pitching wise without Garrett Cole. And it's going to be difficult because their starters are not as good without Garrett Cole. Right. Um, even though like the, the opening series, the Yankees rotation gave them, uh, you know, a 3.48 ERA, which isn't bad, but I mean, they didn't eat up a ton of innings. The Yankees had to go to the bullpen frequently. Their bullpen tossed 15 in the third inning. So we're close to a, we're about a 60, a 55, 45 split between reliever and starter innings. That's not great. Uh, but we kind of anticipated that first time through. And secondly, the Yankees' bullpen is so good, you don't really have to worry about it, right? Like, the bullpen isn't taxed. Clay Holmes is probably taxed. He's been used a little bit much, but, like, Loisega, once, one day off, one day pitching. One day off, one day, or, well, excuse me, one day pitching, two days off, one day pitching. That's kind of how they envisioned it. Um, you know, Hamilton, he's used to, he was used twice in the series. Birdie, used twice in the series. Like, it's not like the Yankees have been overexpending their guys. But Luis Seal, you're not going to expect a big start out of him in terms of innings pitched. He's He maxed out at 63 pitches in spring training. I imagine the Yankees are going to let him sit around 70 to 75, maybe 80, somewhere in that range. Uh, but the stuff is definitely brilliant. The four-seamer, you know, 18 inches of induced vertical break, low slot release, nasty, good extension, sitting 97. He's even a, a little bit higher in terms of velocity or consistent VLO than he was uh, pre-TJS. Um, and, and then you look at the slider. The slider shape's a little bit different. It's not better per se, but I think it's easier to command, and that might help him. And then the changeup's gross. So, you know, he's got three weapons to throw, three plus 
plus pitches, and that's really uh, the big advantage here. His stuff plus in spring training was wicked. It was great. Um, I thought he had a really encouraging camp. I was somebody who thought, okay, well, Will Warren's more polished. You'd probably go to Will Warren, but the Yankees opted with the guy with the better stuff. And Alex, you know me. I'm never going to dis- discourage a team from saying, you have better stuff. We're throwing you today. And if Luis Seal can kind of string together a couple of really good starts, get himself going, get the eight ball rolling. These are some really tough opponents the Yankees play. I look at the Yankees schedule, man. It's brutal. It's it's Blue Jays after the Diamondbacks. The Marlins, like the Marlins aren't great, but they're not a pushover. Cleveland, again, not a pushover. Then I think you play uh, the Blue Jays again, and then it's like Rays, Astros, Mariners, Dodgers, Padres, Giants. Like, it's this just absolute crap show of, uh, and I would use a different term, but I, I'll prefer not to for now. Uh, it, it's a crap show of just really tough teams. Luis Seal's going to be tested early and often. If he can convert some really good starts, that's definitely a good step in the right direction. And hopefully the Yankees are able to get him to consistently throw strikes. If he walks 9% of batters, I'm fine. I think he could have a lot of success even walking 9% of batters face because his strikeout stuff is so good. And I even prefer him saying, all right, it's a 3-1 count. This guy's sitting fastball. I'm just going to throw a fastball upstairs. If he doesn't chase, so be it. He'll walk, go to first base, get the next guy, right? Like, I think walks are something that Heal can use to his advantage, kind of like how Blake Snell uses them. Uh, not comparing him to a Cy Young winner. Of course, I'm not saying he's going to win the Cy Young. I'm just saying that, you know, really good pitchers with nasty stuff can kind of say, all right, let me live to face another batter. Let me live to, to, to fight another day almost. Pick your battles in a sense. Um, and, and Heal, again, like he's going to have Wells behind the plate most likely tonight. I don't think they're going to go to Trevino knowing that it's Ryan Nelson on the mound. Ryan Nelson's really bad against lefties. Wells had a pretty good start to his season. Trevino hasn't necessarily had a great start to his season offensively, but he's not a good hitter, so you kind of expect that. Um, and, and Wells and Heal have rapport because they definitely played a little bit at the minor league level uh, together. I don't know if they were ever on the same affiliate for an extended period of time, uh, but I do know they've they've definitely got a rapport during spring training because I think Wells has caught a couple of his games. So I wouldn't be shocked if we saw, uh, I, not wouldn't be shocked, I'd expect to see Wells behind the plate tonight, Alex. And uh, kind of my last note before we depart on Luis Heal, I just... I'm really excited because if the Yankees can develop a starter from within, that helps you, right? Like you need to be able to start developing cost control talent. You, you can't keep needing to pay for a third, a fourth, a uh, second starter, uh, your third baseman, your first baseman, your uh, your your, your uh, left fielder, your right fielder. I mean, I do want to be paying for my right fielder because that's Juan Soto. So I do want to be paying for that. But, you know, when you're paying Soto, Judge, uh, Cole, and, you know, obviously you're still on the hook for Stanton, Rodon, and guys of that nature, you don't like, you don't want to have to go up to six... Give, having to give out six years, $90 million to LeMayhew, right? Like having to give Aaron Hicks seven years, $70 million. Having to give, um, you know, even those lower level contracts, right? Like, I mean, not lower level, but even those like non 10 year deals, like you had to pay Rodon because you couldn't develop anybody else within. We got to start converting those, these, these really talented prospects into, into contributors. If you guys aren't willing to trade them, which is fine. The Yankees have been aggressive with trading the prospects, but there have been certain guys they've hung on to. That's fine that you hold on certain guys. Yeah, you should hold on to a Spencer Jones. Yeah, you should hold on to a Jason Dominguez, whatever it may be. Okay, then start converting these guys into studs. Like these guys need to be given the opportunity to contribute at the world for a World Series. Because if we consider them future pieces of this team, I'm not looking at them as the future pieces of a rebuild. I'm looking at them as future pieces of a World Series winning team. I think Jason Dominguez is the future five hitter for a World Series winning Yankee squad. I think Spencer Jones is the middle of the order threat or your starting center fielder for a World Series squad. I view Will Warren, Chase Hampton, and Luis Seal as starters on a World Series Yankee team. I don't view them as, oh yeah, they're like minor league depth. That's not what they are. So I would love to see the ball get rolling with like getting these guys to, to, to compete in these big situations against really good teams and hopefully earn spots on this team long term. Absolutely. I mean, look, right now this Yankee team is maybe overperforming what we expected to open the season against the Astros. Sweeping them was certainly kind of a luxury, but it proved something to us. It proved resiliency, it proved grit, and we're seeing a lot of upside from this squad. Um, But guys, we'd love to hear your perspectives down in the YouTube comment section below. We have another video following this, so if you're interested in this superstar Japanese player, Roki Sasaki, the Yankees are reportedly scouting and looking into as a potential option for next offseason, make sure to go check, check out that video as well. And like and subscribe. Let's go Yankees tonight. I think, what is it? A, a 10 p.m. game, so it's a late one, but we're excited about it. And nonetheless, Juan Soto, must-see baseball, must-see television. We're hyped. I know you guys are too, and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode. Perfect.